The Dajjal is the Islamic Antichrist and according to tradition or hadith, which is said to be the sayings and the words of Muhammad, it's believed that the Dajjal is locked up on an island waiting for the end times. Now of course, I'm a Bible-believing Christian, I believe in what the Bible says for what my view is of the end times, but I feel like it's going to have to somehow play into these other religions end times eschatology because it's kind of hard to imagine what two billion Muslims are going to do on the earth when the Christian end times start to take place. I believe somehow these beliefs within Islam of an antichrist, of a savior, their savior, the Mahdi, as well as they believe and teach that Jesus Christ will come back and actually kill the Dajjal or the antichrist. So this is just going to be a little bit of a series I'm going to do covering a few different end times teachings in relation to what other religions believe about their antichrist or their messiah. Because again, I believe somehow it's going to all play in because we know the whole world will be deceived by the Antichrist in the end. So it makes sense that somehow he will play in to these other religions' belief systems of their end times beliefs. First, I'll read a little bit about what the Dajjal is, and then I'm going to read that Hadith and those supposed sayings of Muhammad saying that he's trapped, chained up on an island. Al-Dajjal, Arabic for the deceiver in Islamic eschatology, which is end times teachings, a religion or a belief system, is a false messianic figure who will come forth before the end of time, after a reign of 40 days or 40 years. He will be destroyed by Christ or the Mahdi, rightly guided one, or both, and the world will submit to Allah. Al-Dajjal first appeared as the Antichrist in pseudo-apocalyptic Christian literature and is reworked in Hadith sayings. I think what they mean here when they say this about the Christian literature is there's many teachings within the Hadith and the Quran that are just clearly taken from the biblical narrative, the, the biblical manuscripts, the biblical stories that I'm sure were going around by word of mouth in that same region of the world that Muhammad created the Quran. So that's probably what they mean, how there's this tie to Christian literature, because truly much of Islam, there's very few prophecies in it that are just made up completely unique. Much of it is taken from the biblical manuscripts. It's very easy to prove that. It says within these sayings, the Hadith sayings, that there is that he is described as a plump, one-eyed man with a ruddy face and curling hair and the Arabic letters KFR or unbelief on his forehead. Al-Dajjal will appear during a period of great tribulation. He will be followed by the Jews and will claim to be God in Jerusalem. He will work false miracles and most people will be deceived. At this moment will occur the second coming of Christ. So within this is very interesting and things just absolutely point out to me it really fits in with 2 Thessalonians 2.4 saying the Antichrist will stand in the third temple declared to be God. Within these teachings of the Dajjal or the Islamic Antichrist, he will go to Jerusalem, claim to be God, will work false miracles. You can see how this is all connecting. Also, many teachings within the Bible about how there will be false miracles, false signs by the false prophet, by the beast, by the dragon. All these, all these end times figures within the Bible will be performing false miracles and false signs and wonders. So we can see the connections through all of this. It goes on to say that tradition expects Al Dajjal to appear in the east, possibly in Asia or in the west. In the meantime, he is said to be somewhere in the East Indies or on an island from which the sounds of dancing and beautiful music emanate according to a sailor's lore and the tale of Sinbad the Sailor. An alternative version is linked with the Greek Prometheus legend. In this account, Al Dajjal is bound to a rock on an island in the sea and is fed by demons. Kind of interesting here with more connections to the biblical text of the beasts rising up in the end times out of the sea. There's also a teaching within the Quran that I've mentioned that there will be a beast that comes up out of the sea but will actually be good. This is a teaching in the Quran or the Hadith, I forget, but most Muslims, I believe, the majority of them believe the Hadith and the Quran to both be inspired by God. But there is a teaching that there's a beast that will rise up out of the sea, will have the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. Just again, more correlations to the many beasts of Revelation that we know will be coming out of the sea, but within the Quran, it's actually a good beast. So that's the general overview of the Dajjal. And there is a belief that he is actually imprisoned or trapped or locked away for now on an island somewhere. This is just known as the Dajjal Island. So this is a teaching that is taught within a Hadith and it says that he will emerge near the end of time during great tribulation, that he's currently imprisoned on an island, an unknown island somewhere in the world. This was reported within the Hadith by multiple prophets of Islam. So here's what the vision is, and I think Muslims question whether it was physical or spiritual, some type of encounter, but some sort of vision. 
And this is what the Hadith says about the Dajjal in Dajjal Island. We departed hastily until we were admitted into the monastery and found within it a huge man. We had never seen any creation more firmly imprisoned. His hands were tied to his neck and there were iron shackles between his two legs and his ankles. We said, woe to you, what are you? He said, I will soon tell you about me, but first tell me about you. We said, we are Arabs who have traveled in a seafaring vessel, but it happened to be that the sea seized us and the waves shook us for a month. Then we sought shore on this island of yours. The man said, indeed, I will tell you about myself. I am the Messiah. I will soon be permitted to emerge and thus I will go out and march across the land. I will not leave any town, but that I will occupy it for 40 nights, except for Mecca and Medina. They are both forbidden for me. Every time I want to enter one of them, I will be confronted by an angel with a sword in his hand to obstruct me from them. Indeed, around every vulnerability among them is an angel to guard them. Throughout the Hadith, then these two prophets who are there are questioning whether they should kill him, and it goes on to say, the prophet did not allow Umar to harm him because he was either the false messiah and thus could not be harmed until the signs of the hour had come to pass, the hour being the reference within Islam of the last days, or he was simply an ordinary blasphemer in which case there was no good in killing him. Nevertheless, some of the senior companions swore an oath to Allah that he was the false messiah. And this is because they saw this false messiah in another location as well. It goes on to say that one of these Islamic prophets says that he reconciles the two stories of seeing this false messiah in two different locations, that he has the ability to take on different forms, while with the essence of the unseen beyond the physical world and being within the physical world as well. So that is a brief overview of the Dajjal Island and the Dajjal within the Islamic belief. It's really strange to see. I mean, it's not strange, but it's strange to try to figure out how these different beliefs and religions are going to somehow work together in the end times. I feel like the Antichrist is somehow going to deceive the entire world. Well, I know that to be a fact because that's what the Bible says. So what's it going to be? Is he going to come on an alien spaceship and just blow away everyone's mind who doesn't believe in Jesus to where they just submit to him? Or will it be that he somehow fulfills these different prophecies of these different religions? I mean, much of the world who believes in such like Eastern religions, like these temples of these gods and these animals that are blue with like a bunch of arms, such as Indian religions, they would very clearly just accept the Antichrist when he's doing signs and wonders. They would just right away ex ex like worship him as God. So that's clearly how they will fall into worshiping the Antichrist. Atheists, they don't care. When they're told that they have to get a mark in their hand or their head or they can't buy or sell, means nothing to them. So there's that. But what is the two billion Muslims and the Jewish people of the world going to do? The Jewish people are expecting a Messiah. So it makes sense that it'll somehow do that. Islam is expecting a Messiah. They're Al-Mahdi. Somehow that will happen. And this will be a video I'll be coming out with soon. But I just need to kind of put more pieces together. We have the false prophet, the Antichrist, and the dragon, which we know through biblical end times eschatology, that they will all be going on and on the scene deceiving the world in the end in the last days for me i'm trying to see what's the connection to where like the false prophet would be potentially the false messiah for the jewish people the antichrist would be the mahdi for the islamic people and then just be the persecutor of christians so maybe and then these two come together you know these two people will say oh well here's the jewish messiah and then the islamic messiah maybe that's how the peace treaty is, is created and then they of course come together in unity and then just take over the whole world the antichrist declares to be god the god of the world in the third temple within israel and then that's about the time when god comes down jesus comes back and destroys him and all the evil in the world and everybody who submitted and worshiped the beast or got his mark in their hand or head with the word of his mouth. So that's just a brief overview of the Islamic Dajjal and the Islamic Antichrist. I by far am not an expert in all of that, so leave any information that I'm sure I probably missed out in the comments below. But what I do know is I believe the Bible to be 100% truth. I've seen it in my life. And so I just have to look through the lens of what the Bible says is gonna happen in the end, day, in the end times and try to figure out everything else around it. Not that I have to, but it's something I enjoy to do. So that's kind of my point with this video. I'm going to look into some more prophecies, definitely about what the Talmud says about the Messiah coming and 
I will 100% be making a video on that soon. And then also I might look into like, say, I know they're expecting another Buddha. And also there's Native American prophecies like the Hopi prophecies and things like that. So leave any ideas or anything I left out in the comments below. Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the only way to escape the end times deceptions of the Antichrist and Satan. And the only way to God, the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. John 14, 6. Thanks for watching and God bless.